Yeah. yeah. If you can't measure utility independently of price, you can't put an electrode in someone's head, why, why have it as a variable in your theory? I mean, because the equations have become well, topology, because, they just become topologies now. No, it doesn't. It because, because I think what it, it's a framework for thinking about how they're making their choice. And I don't need to, that, I don't need the electrode in their head. Because once I know that they're making their choices in a particular way, I can use the choices that they've made to tell me about their preferences. So I see this guy. I see this guy. He chooses this point. Now, I can't see that indifference. I can't. I just don't, it, it, just from this one choice. But I know enough about how he's making his choice to know that that indifference curve slope at that point is equal to that budget. And that's the power of the theory. The power of the theory is to say, I can translate what I can see, which is the budget line, to learn about something I can't see, which is this guy's preference. So then when I see something happen in the future, I can predict his behavior because I'm thinking about it as being driven by this underlying process. That's the key of it. It's like, it's like in, it's like if you can't, it's like when guys were trying to figure out where's their black hole or whatever, right? They look for things that they could see moving and they can say, well, geez, I got this star and it's orbiting in this very strange way, but I can explain its orbit because if there were a black hole sitting right here, I would exactly see what I'm seeing in terms of how this star is moving, right? That's kind of the same idea we're doing here. And, well, no, but the predictions of this theory are going to turn out to be observed. That's the point. No, so, well, it's not a heuristic. So, let's say, for example, I look at, I, I, I use my theory, and I see the sum of the xi, pi, and then I find equals m, and then I find another point, xi hat, pi, which is less than m. Okay? And I went to this guy and I said, ah, hey, you want this point over that one? What is my theory about? He would never take that point if he had that choice. The fact that he chose that point tells me this point is worse. Because this point is not only below his indifference curve, it's below his budget line. That's the nature of the predictive power. That I can take this outside this context. Once I saw him make that choice, I can learn that he prefers that point to all these other points. In fact, that's how I'm going to learn about his preference. Right? I'm going to see him make this choice. How do I learn about preference? I start with this point here. And that's his point. That's a point. And I say, hey, guy, you want this point? And he says, no, nope, I won't take it. Want this point? Nope, I won't take it. Want this point? Yep, I'll take it. And I just keep doing that. And I put all the boxes around the ones he chooses, and I put X's around all the ones he doesn't choose. And ultimately, I am going to learn about his preference. That is, my theory of his behavior is going to allow me to learn about his preferences from his choice. And then I can use those preferences to answer all kinds of other questions I might be interested in. About how much he'd benefit from various programs, how he'd respond to various changes in the marketplace, things like that. That's the key of the theory. 